Hi, Stories Channel here. The storyline of the movie is set at the end of the 19th century. In a wealthy French family lives a beautiful woman named Eugenie. Her closest companion is her brother. He is also the only person who knows about a special ability Eugenie possesses. She has the power to talk to the dead, feel their pain, and communicate their thoughts with the living. When she interacts with them, she breathes heavily, trembles, and does things involuntarily. Sounds like 99% of the people who watch Amaranth streams. Until now, she has only had a few such experiences, but as Eugenie grows up, she is becoming more and more prone to manic episodes. One night, she is tucking her grandmother into sleep, when the woman asks her if she went to a friend's funeral. Unlike how a normal person would reply, Eugenie claims that she had a lot of fun because there were many people. The grandmother is used to Eugenie's bizarre behavior, which she thinks is worrying but doesn't say much about it. On her way back to her room, Eugenie hears whispers coming from the hallways. Upon checking, she finds her brother making out out with a man. She smiles and rushes back to her room. The following day, she sneaks into his carriage, asking him to drop her off at the market. He discovers that she knows about his gay relationship, but trusts her enough to know she won't tell their father. Eugenie is not allowed to go outside alone, but her brother cannot protest now that she knows his secret. A while later, she is let off at the market, where she enjoys some alone time walking down the street. Then she enters a cafe and sits across from a man reading a book about spirits. The two exchange glances until the guy introduces himself to her. He immediately starts flirting, and even though Eugenie is uncomfortable at first, she eventually feels at ease because of his jokes. She admits that she wasn't looking at him, but at the book that he is reading. Before Eugenie leaves, the man lends her the book and asks her to return it when she is done reading. At night, Eugenie starts reading the book and is instantly intrigued by it. It has chapters about the spirit world, the purpose of their existence, and even about human spirit interactions. This gives Eugenie a lot of information about herself and what she can do to help the spirits who want her assistance. While she is at it, her brother cuddles with her and the two talk about their love lives. That's… that's weird. In the following scene, the siblings and their family go on an outing with another wealthy family. The daughter of another family is single, so the adults want her to take an interest in Eugenie's brother. Although he is not interested in her, he pretends to like her in order to not seem suspicious. Eugenie sees her brother struggling and interrupts the two. This causes the girl to leave them alone, but earns her disapproval from their father. He has always been less interested in Eugenie because she doesn't fit the description of the rich, snobby girl whose only hobby is extravagance. She is kind and sympathetic to the weak, which her father thinks is a quality of the poor. One night, Eugenie is helping her grandmother brush her hair as her nightly routine. Suddenly, she stops mid-sentence and goes through an intense manic episode. She involuntarily pulls out a drawer and starts making a mess of the things inside before finding a necklace. When everything stops, the grandmother is in shock. The necklace was a gift from her late husband, which has been missing for the past 40 years. They thought someone stole it and stopped looking for it decades ago. The woman always knew Eugenie was special. but. On seeing what she can do, she doesn't know if it is a good thing. She asks her how she knew where the necklace was, and Eugenie replies that her grandfather told her. The following morning, she is woken up by her mother, who says that the father is taking her to the store today. Eugenie is excited and unable to notice the sadness in her mother's voice. She naively gets dressed and joins her father and brother in a carriage. Even after noticing the vast change in her brother's behavior, she doesn't suspect anything strange. It is only when her eyes land on the luggage under the seat that she realizes they are not just going to the the market. She looks out the window and sees a woman staring into nothingness. Two orderlies come to pick her up and forcefully drag her into the building. She begs her father and brother to help her, but both of them remain seated. When she is far enough, her brother starts vomiting out of fear and guilt. Inside, she is stripped naked and checked for any physical injuries or abnormalities. Throughout all of this, she protests that she is not insane, but now only the doctors can decide that. Her freedom is snatched away, and her sole purpose becomes to prove that she is not insane, while every minute detail of her character is studied. She also has to share a room with many other women, some of whom are actually mentally ill, while the others have been falsely imprisoned by powerful men who wanted to get rid of them. The sanest one out of all of them is a woman named Louise. She befriends Eugenie and helps her settle in. Although better than the rest of the women, Louise has quite an eccentric behavior herself. The following morning, Louise is taken 
taken to be examined by the male doctors of the asylum. They hypnotize her and treat her like a subject to their experiments, rather than a patient. They are not in the least sympathetic when she falls down and starts trembling because of their malpractices. The only staff who care about the patients is the head nurse, Genevieve. She is a kind woman who is aware of the doctor's cruel ways of treating patients, but cannot raise her voice against her employers. A while later, a young doctor named Jules comes to Louise and pretends like he is worried for her. In reality, he is a pervert who lusts for his patients and takes advantage of their situations. He has promised Louise that he will marry her someday. Hence, she lets him pleasure himself in front of her. As days pass, Eugenie starts getting more intense episodes. She hides them well and doesn't let anyone know about her power, scared of being experimented on. But one afternoon, she tells Nurse Genevieve in a moment of weakness. She reveals that she talked to Genevieve's late sister and proves it by saying things that only Genevieve would know. The nurse is shocked, but she still doesn't want to believe her. The following day is the day of her final evaluation. The doctor asks her several questions and makes her admit that she has been seeing spirits again. When he says that she has to be kept in the asylum for longer, Eugenie loses patience and starts yelling at him. She makes a huge mistake by doing so because the doctor declares that she has hysteria. In the asylum, anyone with hysteria has to go through hydrotherapy. It is a process where patients are laid in a box full of ice for hours until their body goes numb and they do not feel pain anymore. Many women have died because of this practice, but the doctors believe it is the best way to make women less loud. Eugenie protests and refuses to oblige, but the orderlies throw her into the box and restrain her inside. She shivers and begs for several minutes before giving up and accepting her fate as it is. In the evening, Genevieve is on her way back home when she feels someone's presence behind her. It turns out to be Eugenie's brother who is worried about her and wants to know how she is doing. Genevieve decides to stay true to her position as a nurse and maintains her patient's confidentiality. Before leaving, he hands her the book about spirits that Eugenie was reading prior to being sent to the asylum. Genevieve is supposed to give the book to Eugenie. However, she cannot help but read it herself first. She completes the entire thing in one night and is disturbed by its content. Although Genevieve is a true believer in science, the book makes her register that Eugenie could be telling the truth. Meanwhile, in the asylum, Eugenie is finally let free. She cuddles with Louise to remain warm for the rest of the night, but she hardly gets any sleep. The next day, she is approached by Genevieve, who wants to communicate with her late sister. She offers Eugenie the book and a chance to meet her brother if she agrees to help her. Eugenie says a meeting with her brother is not enough. She wants complete freedom from this place. It is next to impossible, but Genevieve promises to do what she can. In the following scene, the two are alone together in a room. Eugenie is trying to form a connection with Genevieve's sister, but is unsuccessful. As Genevieve starts questioning her powers, something takes over Eugenie. She starts trembling and says that something bad has happened to Genevieve's father. Not wanting to take the risk, the nurse runs to her home and finds a blood napkin on the dining table. Fortunately, she reaches just in time to rescue her father, who is about to fall unconscious. Then, another month passes in the asylum in the same fashion. Eugenie freezes in an ice bath every day, gets her ovaries checked frequently, and watches the girls being assaulted by the doctors. One afternoon, she notices that the doctors have made a patient frantic because of a medicine overdose. They show no remorse for being the cause of her misery and instead joke about her situation. Eugenie is enraged by their nonchalance. She calls them out for using women to fulfill their sexual desires and their absurd medical theories. When she doesn't stop cursing at them, she is sent into isolation under a different nurse named Jean. She is sadistic and treats the patients like toys, much like the male doctors. Eugenie is kept in a tiny room with only one window that remains closed most of the day. Inside the room, she hears the voices of many spirits who have died there. It is terrifying to her and she begs and cries to be put somewhere else, but Jean doesn't care. As days pass, Eugenie gets more and more scared. Jean only gives her a minute of sunlight and closes the window for most of the day. She eats leftover food and loses sleep because of all the noises. 
As a result, her health deteriorates rapidly. One afternoon, Jean enters the room and mocks her. Eugenie keeps quiet as the nurse eats delicious food in front of her. Then, suddenly, she gets a vision of Jean's late mother and finds out she also died in the same room after Jean falsely admitted her to the asylum. The nurse remains unfazed by the information and doesn't regret killing her own mother. But then, Eugenie brings up the topic of her child's death. It is revealed that Jean's mother murdered her child, which is why she killed her. Jean breaks down into tears for a few seconds before strangling Eugenie. She orders her to keep her child's name out of her mouth before walking away, leaving Eugenie shaken. Jean is walking down the hallway when a girl bumps into her and steals the keys to the isolation rooms. She hands them to Genevieve, revealing that it was her idea to steal them. Later, she goes to Eugenie and talks to her through the door. Eugenie has communicated with Genevieve's sister once again. She transfers their messages to each other and gives them closure. Genevieve is so thankful that she decides to help Eugenie. Later that day, she tells the head doctor that Eugenie has improved exponentially ever since she was moved into isolation. Although suspicious, he allows her to join the common ward again. After coming out of the dark room, Eugenie meets Louise, who is now bound to a wheelchair because of all the malpractices she was forced to go through. Then comes the day of the annual ball in the asylum. It is the one day in the year when the women get to dress up, dance, and enjoy life as though they were normal. Eugenie's brother also gets an invitation and joins the party. The siblings see each other after almost a year, but have to act like they don't know each other. In another room, the doctors flirt with the women and take advantage of their authority. Louise is also approached by Jules, who uses his same old promises to make her consent to whatever he wishes. Meanwhile, Eugenie and her brother make a run for it through the front gate. They are almost caught by Jean, but the other women help them by restraining her. The women go wild after that and start hitting the doctors. Jules is strangled to the ground and is finally taught a lesson by Louise. Outside, Genevieve refuses to come with Eugenie, wanting to remain with the other women who need her. The scene cuts to a few months later. Eugenie lives on the coast of France, far from everything she has ever known. She is happy and satisfied for the first time in her life. Then, there is Genevieve, who has herself been admitted to the asylum. She is at peace with herself and her situation, especially knowing that her late sister is in a better place. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.